different states use different names. Expressway, toll road, limited access highway, turnpike, freeway, superhighway. But whatever the name, each of these great roads has been engineered to permit motor travel in minimum time, with up to four times the safety of ordinary highways. These superhighways have a number of features that distinguish them from ordinary roads. They have a limited number of entrances and exits. On cross-country sections, these are spaced from 20 to 40 miles apart. All superhighways divide traffic with two or more lanes in each direction. All are designed to permit average speeds that are higher than those of ordinary roads, with much greater safety. They are free from cross traffic, stop signs, and stop lights. Service stations and restaurants are combined in service areas or plazas, about 30 minutes driving time apart. The great superhighways have something else in common. They provide a very special type of highway environment placing special demands on the car and the driver. Just what are these special requirements for driving the superhighways? There are six, and you'll find that they concern the condition of your car, your own condition as a driver, your care in trip planning, your turnpike driving techniques, your night driving precautions, your action in emergencies. A knowledge of these six requirements of superhighway driving not only contributes to your safety, but also adds greatly to the pleasure and economy of your trip. Driving at sustained speeds, hour after hour, calls for engine, powertrain, and tires in excellent condition. Many superhighway accidents involve cars that pull off the road because of mechanical failure. The next service station may be 30 miles away, that's all right for the driver who's rolling along, but not so good for this fellow standing on the sidelines. He'll get help, but he'll wait for it and pay for it. To prevent loss of time and money, have a car checkup at home. The engine, the exhaust system, windshield wipers and washers, brakes, tires, steering, and lights. Also, fuel, water, oil, and tire condition every two hours on the pipe. Yes, it really pays to leave your troubles at home. Super roads are safer, but the constant pace and comfort can lull you into a deceptive feeling of security. You forget you're moving fast enough to fly an airplane, 88 feet per second. If you keep staring at the road mile after mile, you get drowsy, almost hypnotized. And when that happens, you can drive right into trouble. To help avoid drowsiness, sometimes called highway hypnosis, Get plenty of sleep the night before so that you start out fresh and alert. It helps get out of the car and stretch. So plan to stop at a plaza at least five minutes every hour after the first two hours of driving. If you begin to feel drowsy between stops, get some air sing songs or talk out loud. Keep your eyes moving, near, far, and to both sides. Chew gum. Move around and change your seat position. If nothing works, if drowsiness and blurred vision continue, get off the highway. It may save your life. Maps of the turnpike are available free at toll stations and service plazas. Get one and study it carefully at an early stage of your trip. 
Make a decision as to your first fuel stop. Give some thought to where you will stop to rest or eat. Above all, locate the exit you will want to use when leaving the turnpike. It will have a number. Fix this number firmly in your mind and watch for it because even though you miss it by only a few feet, there's no turning back. That's the law. Some people have been crazy enough to try to back up, which is like trying to commit suicide. Others have tried making a U-turn across the divider strip, which is dangerous and illegal. Acts like these can lead to death on the highway. A few minutes invested in trip planning is always the best way out. The design of superhighways calls for special driving skills. You enter the big roads by means of acceleration lanes, which permit you to adjust your speed to the fast-moving traffic. You time your approach from the first moment you can see the oncoming vehicle. By the time you reach the highway, you should be able to blend with traffic at proper cruising speed. Leaving the big road, you use a deceleration lane. You enter this lane at cruising speed, or as indicated by highway signs. It is dangerous to slow down on the pike itself. When you're in the clear, decelerate as safety requires by taking your foot off the gas and using the brakes when needed. The principle of these techniques is to be sure to blend with the traffic you are joining or leaving. In passing other cars, the slightest mistake can lead to a high-speed accident. Before changing lanes, make sure that no one is in your blind spot getting ready to pass you. Use your rear vision mirror and double check in the side mirror. If everything's okay to the rear, Check ahead to make sure that you have an open left lane. Signal your intention to pass and flash your lights to make sure he knows you're coming through. Once you're in the outer lane, don't hang in his blind spot. Pass him quickly. And don't pull in till you can see his headlights in your rear mirror. Here's something else to consider. It has to do with your spacing in traffic. A car standing still is about 17 feet long. But out on the turnpike at 60 miles per hour, it's moving 88 feet per second. If a quick stop becomes necessary, you suddenly discover that your car is really as long as this. At a lesser distance, if the car ahead stops, The number one turnpike accident is the rear end collision, and the number one cause is tailgating, crowding too closely behind. At turnpike speeds, the smart thing is to stay back at least 10 car lengths. Best of all, give yourself room all around. You might call it living room. Superhighways are safer at night than other roads. But it's up to you to be sure that you adjust your speed so that you can stop short of anything within range of your headlights. You're only as safe as your vision, so it pays to be fussy about having a clean windshield and clean light lenses. You can see better if you dim the lights on your instrument panel. Keep your eyes moving. Use those mirrors, and you'll never be surprised from the rear. When meeting oncoming traffic or overtaking the car ahead, don't ruin the driver's vision with your brights. Use low beam, and you won't be sharing the road with a blind driver. If you are on a superhighway and have to make an emergency stop, 
have your car under control and protect yourself from a rear end collision as you slow down. The situation calls for an instant check through the rear mirror and side mirror. When it's safe, pull off the road. And off means way off. It's suicide to stop the car in a traffic lane. To get help, wait for a safe moment and then tie a white cloth to the left door handle or side mirror. Also, raise the hood. Don't leave your car and hitchhike. A trooper or tow truck will stop in a matter of minutes. Finally, protect yourself by standing well back from the road. There's no use turning an emergency into an accident. Great journeys are possible today on superhighways and turnpikes. With their multiple lanes, long sight distances, and liberal speed limits, they enable you to complete a trip in one-third to one-half less time than on ordinary roads. Even with toll charges, they are usually more economical to use than old stop-and-go roads because of the savings you can make on fuel as well as wear and tear on your car. You and your passengers can be super safe on these super roads through your skillful attention to the condition of your car, your own condition as a driver, your care in trip planning, your turnpike driving techniques, your night driving precautions, your action in emergency. Driving today's automobiles on the new superhighways places you in the safest motor travel environment yet devised. The rest is up to you.